Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. Um, this is the next portion of the dark crystal necklace. Now, if you've been following all of the videos I've been doing, um, showing the progress of the necklace and the design phase and everything, you'll know that um, I plan to basically put beadwork in here that represents the Skeksis towards the bottom of the necklace. So this whole portion that you see today um, is very much to symbolise the dark side um, and the Skeksis. Now I'm using a round size 11 black but I was noticing um, the beadwork was a bit too close to the brown line and I really wanted to make sure that that line remained straight and that my additional beadwork didn't push into it and um, cause it to buckle or become not as straight. So that's why I, I drew that line there to give me a bit of a um, guideline and hopefully make my work a little straighter. And it did seem to work and then after that I was okay. I think I just needed to get the right distance. You can see I'm, I'm quite fussy with my work. If I'm not happy with it I will pull it out and redo it. So I'm doing that black line sort of halfway up the triangle um, at the start because I wasn't sure how far up I wanted the um, these dark black curls and tendrils and so forth. So I started off at about halfway up to get a feel for you know how that looked. Now obviously I've got that little purple crystal at the bottom so I am stopping the beadwork when I get to that point and then you know going back and now I'm doing a, another layer um, like a second row of the black seed beads and this is all in back stitch as you can see And you can see the lines that I've drawn in um, when I was designing um, the, the necklace, like putting in those uh, first few lines to get the shape right. And I'm pretty much going to that line. And to do that, I needed a third row. So you can see I'm going back in again with another third row. Now, I'm not wanting this to be symmetrical. Um, I want it to be balanced. Now what I mean by that is the both sides will be approximately the same but not the same. Um, and I do that a lot in my work. I really like organic um, shapes and things but particularly for this I'm really wanting it to look like dark magic or something um, you know billowing around the bottom of the necklace. So. I don't want that to be symmetrical because that won't give that same look. So you can see there I and making each of those rows a little bit different in length and again that's just to give that almost shaded look I suppose of the black coming into the rest of the necklace um, and then at the bottom I wasn't sure at first if I was going to um, completely fill out that point of the necklace or whether I was going to sort of beat around that crystal and have a blunt end to the necklace because I am putting the shard um, at the bottom of that if you recall so um, yeah I was sort of looking at it and then decided no I really did want to emphasize the um, angle there and um, to help 
redefine, you know, the triangle above that as well. I just felt like I, I wanted that sharp point, um, and particularly because this part is the Skeksis, I feel like I needed, you know, an angle there, a sharpness there. So um, you can see I'm then filling out the beadwork uh, right to the point there. So now that I've done that, I am going to be going in, as you can see, I've um, put f beads, four beads on my uh, needle and then went back in. Now uh, what I'm doing is a herringbone stitch, or sometimes called endobelly, and it's a flat one, not, not obviously the tubular. Um, but what I'm doing for this is using different bead sizes. Um, and that is to give it a curl. So if you were to use the same size um, for an endobelly strip, it's just going to be perfectly straight. But if you then start to put on one side a size 6 or a size 8 and then on one side a size 11, then that's going to force it to go in a curl. Um, so what I'm doing is really trying to think about how sharply I want it to curl and the more sharply you want it to curl um, the larger the bead you would put on one side and then you can even reduce this size 11 to a size 15 if you want a very sharp turn um, or you can do a slightly lesser turn by using a size 11 and a size 8 because the size 8 is only marginally bigger than the size 11 where obviously the size 6 is a lot bigger and will force a um, tighter turn. And you can see I've just done a bit of a curl out for the first one. I really wanted to sort of start a bit gradual for the first couple of uh, little curls. You'll get a, a sense of what I'm trying to do as I go further up the necklace. Um, adding these parts in. Now I didn't want to cover up that crystal so I am making the curl go out from the necklace and not over in front of that um, purple crystal. You'll be able to see the shape of it a bit more once I've sort of finished because obviously while I'm working on it, it's moving around a bit. And you can see how those size sixes really make that um, curl turn quite sharply. And when I'm ready to finish it off, I just use one bead um, and then go back down through the other row of beads again and it just brings it to a bit of a point. So you can see I've worked my way up the necklace a little bit further where I want my next curl to come out of. Now I definitely recommend that you use rounds for this, not um, delicas or any of the cylinder beads. And that's because the cylinders don't like to have a natural curve as much as the rounds do. So I just find that rounds for this purpose are much better. So you can see that curl's getting quite large. I'm wanting the curl as I go up further 
um, to be a little uh, larger. And then I've moved up the beadwork and um, started to work on another curl there. And this one I do um, curl, you know, out and then back in again, which you can do as well. So all of the curls I've done at the moment have just curved out from the necklace. But you can absolutely make it curve out and back in again. Um, you can make it twist and turn however you like, just by again changing the size of the beads and which side you're changing um, the size will you know, determine which direction that curl will go in. So I start by curling it out, just as I did with the others, um, you know, using the larger size on the side closest to the necklace. And then you can see how I'm adding uh, larger seed beads on the other side again now and it's curving back in again so um, you know if you're wanting that sort of shape just have a think about that before you um, create it and which way you want it to curve and help that that will help um, define you know which size you use on on uh, the beadwork So you can see that last one I did was um, a much larger curl than the rest of them. And you know, I didn't want a really big curl at the bottom of the necklace. It would have been um, too abruptly large. Um, it wouldn't have looked as good to do that. So it was definitely a design, de design decision to go smaller then build it up in the center and then you know um, have a few smaller ones again towards the top of the section where I'm doing these black tendrils. Now they do tend to get a bit caught, the thread, so just be really careful as you're going through um, to free your thread each time. The worst is when you don't realise that it, your thread's caught on something and then it becomes free later on and then you have some very loose thread and uh, that can really impact your stitches later on. So um, yeah, just keep an eye on where the thread is. So again, same thing on this side, but obviously I'm wanting to mainly curve it out from the necklace, so the curls are going the opposite direction, um, just so that they're curling away from the necklace. I definitely didn't want any of the triangle to be um, too covered by any of these tendrils because it was really important to me to have that triangle shape be very clear because I feel like that's such an important aspect um, of this necklace. It um, holds a lot of symbology for the movie, showing you know the great conjunction. So I didn't want to cover that up too much. A little bit was okay. So yeah, I just didn't want any of those curls to go too far over that triangle. So as you can see, you go up through the beadwork, you add two beads, 
um, whichever sizes you're wanting for the curve and then go back down the other side and then I usually go down two to three beads um, move across to the other side and sew back up again you can go just one bead down but it doesn't anchor the beadwork as strongly as if you do go down a few more beads that just keeps it really strong Now a couple of the larger curls I did also sew into the beadwork so they didn't flop about um, and you can make that decision if you do uh, anything like this. But um, that's where we're at at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this next video and use some of these techniques in some of your own work. And we'll see you next time. Bye guys.